Okay, good morning and welcome to the sixth Sums Up webinar for mobility practitioners. Uh, welcome you all uh, this morning. Um, we're waiting, or we're not really waiting, but like we wait a little bit for attendees still to drop in um, to be admitted to the webinar. So we'll start in a moment. And as you know, the webinar today has the topic on integrating SUMPs to urban planning or climate work. And we're really happy to have two very interesting presentations. So yeah, attendees are still dropping in. But uh, I'll already start with giving you some um, technical uh, introduction or just a few details for your participation. I guess most of you have been um, dialing in by the computer, but it's also possible to dial in by phone in case uh, that's better for your connection, as you can see here on the screen. You are all attendees are on by default muted in this webinar to ensure a good connection and uh, that we don't have any background noise. But you're uh, of course welcome to to uh, say something and to participate. So you can. Um, the best thing is if you have some some questions or some something to comment to use the chat. Um, especially if it's uh, something that if you don't hear or don't see or something like this to use the chat, you can also raise your hand. Uh, then we will use different ways how to engage you in this webinar. We will um, use uh, different, different polls that we ask you to answer so that we uh, get some feedback from you. I will announce them then once they are um, they're coming. Uh, and then we will have a question and answer session in the end. So if you have questions to any presentations, you're really welcome to insert them into this question function that you see on the sidebar. So you can write your question there and we try to either answer them already during the webinar, if we can, if it's short questions for the, for, uh, that we, the organizers can answer. And then we will go through the questions with our presenters and our, our speakers today in the end of the webinar. So that's the webinar team for today. Um, my uh, colleague uh, Maya Rosanen, also from the UBC Sustainable Cities Commission, we work together in Sums Up. She will give us a short uh, presentation on the different activities and different um, learning activities we have in Sums Up for mobility practitioners. And then we're really happy to have two presenters, two speakers in our webinar. First, we have Anna Huttonen from the city of Lahti, who will give us a presentation on SUMP and urban planning integration. And then we have Fabio Tomasio from the Area Science Park, who will talk about Simpla and to harmonize SUMPs with SECOPs. Really looking forward to, to those two presentations. Well, and now I already mentioned it, so this is our agenda for today. We'll start with the learning activities and the two presentations, and then we will have a um, question and answer session. So, um, yeah, so, but as I said, the questions, whenever they come up, you have anything on your mind you want to ask the speakers, please add them to the question section. So it's a lot easier for us to manage those. And, um, yeah, before we actually start, now it's just, now we start, but before that we will ask you um, to pulse. And now, um, wait a second. We have had a little bit technical um, challenges this morning with GoToWebinar. Now I'm searching my, sorry, my mouse. <laughs> that doesn't show anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. Please excuse for this for this uh, this uh, difficulties. Now I I really need to <laughs> I'm so, I don't have my now I have, I'm sorry now I, ha I now I have my my mouse here. Um, so. Okay, now back to the program, I'm sorry. Now uh, we would like to ask you a few questions um, in the polls, just to know also what, uh, who we have in the webinar. So we would like to ask you, what kind of organization do you represent? So 
please answer that shortly. So we get some impression, we and also you as attendees, of course, like who is actually in the webinar. Few more seconds. Okay, 80% voted, great. So we have a quite a majority. Um, well, I'll show it to you. Um, almost 60% of municipal administrations, 11% consultancy or education institutions, and 20% other. Thanks a lot. That gives us a, some kind of impression what kind of um, mobility practitioners we have here. And the second question we would like to ask you, uh, because that's really interesting for us as organizers for these uh, webinars, is that have you participated in any some sub webinars before? Mm -hmm. Okay, stable number, so we'll share share the results with you. So actually, most of you have been taking part in at least one webinar before. That's really great to hear. Okay, thanks um, for that uh, information. And uh, we will now proceed with our uh, webinar and I will pass on to my uh, colleague, Maya to give her presentation. Just a second. Let's see. Um, it's it's a bit challenging today, but we'll try our best. Okay, uh, I give the floor to Maya to give you some introduction about different learning activities we organize for you. Thank you, Esther. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Just put that. Okay. So I will give welcome also from my side, and I will give a bit overview of the sums of learning activities that we offer. And the main aim of the sums approach is to support European local authorities to prepare and implement SUMPs and to help authorities we offer a series of capacity building activities and this webinar is part of the activities what we offer and we offer those to mobility practitioners and how do we define mobility practitioner well mobility practitioner can be anybody who is just working with mobility in somehow and is interested to learn more about implementing SUMB. So this can be a person working for cities or consultancies or, or city networks or also from the related fields such as urban planning or like energy fields or anything. And then uh, I hope that you have already all seen this SUMP cycle and you're familiar with that. And seeing all these different steps that you need to take in order to prepare SUMP may seem a bit challenged, as are quite many steps. But there are like as many different ways to set up SUMP as there are cities. And of course, the plan always needs to reflect the local planning challenges and needs and capacities as well. But there are, of course, certain elements in the SUMP that every city should go through. So, for example, analyzing the mobility situation and then setting up targets based on the analysis, then selecting the appropriate measures that you can meet the targets. And then, of course, involving all different stakeholders like citizens, citizens and other authorities and also mobility providers and so on. So this may sound complicated, but luckily there is a lot of support available like these kind of webinars where you can get support to your local SUMP work. And what SAMSAP offers, we offer a variety of different opportunities to make it really easy to learn about SUMP. So we offer e-courses and these webinars, but we have also developed uh, a lot of guidelines 
guide, different kind of guide, guidance material, and then tools and reports as well. And these e-learning courses, uh, we wanted to offer these because it's quite easy way to learn because you can participate in those e-courses whenever you have like time and directly from your own computer. So they are free for everybody to join and they are available in the Mobility Academy as the platform. And these e-courses will help you to go through the SUMP cycle and present like different steps. And we have also included like really practical case examples as well as like proposals for like guidance material or tools and we have also included like different exercises that actually help to prepare SUMPs. And we have already launched three courses which are already available and will quite soon in this autumn release also the, the last the remaining courses there. So go and check in the Mobility Academy what we have already there. Then we have these webinars where we focus on different aspects of the SUMPs and then also present some of the guidelines that we have been preparing. And we always try to include also a very practical city case example. And there is a room for discussion and asking questions as well. And I would like to promote our next webinar, which is about the financing and funding options for sustainable urban mobility. And you can already register to that and that will be on the 10th of December. And then if you missed our previous webinars, so no worry, those are still like online on the Sums Up website and you can watch those as well anytime. And we have already gone to quite many different SUMP topics. Uh, then about the guidelines, so we have made available several guidelines that help to deal with different SUMP topics. And for example, SAMSA project has coordinated revision of the SUMP guidelines. So if you haven't yet checked, there is the, the second edition of the European SUMP guidelines is now available. And we have also prepared guides for the complementary topics. Like we have certain specific topics like electrification, but then we have also this more these, these horizontal topics such as this funding and financing mobility measures, then preparing public procurement, especially mobility measures. And then also we have a specific guide for the metropolitan areas. Then we also have prepared guidelines for how to select the SUMP measures. But please go and check our website. We have a lot of different material available there. And then you, you find also all our, all our other activities there. Okay, but this was a short overview and thanks from my side and enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Maya. Thanks a lot. Um, before we start now um, with the first presentation, we just would like to ask you one more time a question. Um, because uh, as you said, so the, the topic for today is the, um, is a very important topic in terms of SUMPs, like how can you harmonize and integrate them with other thematic strategy that your cities have. And we would like to ask you, those of you who work for, um, for um, municipalities, is your SUMP harmonized with your urban planning strategy or your urban plan that you have? Okay, 50% voted. Uh, that's, I think, more or less the same amount of uh, municipalities we had. So, um, thank you. I'll share the result. And you can see that 57% uh, said no and 33% said yes. I think that's uh, quite an also quite an interesting uh, result and um, but we take this um, perhaps and have this in mind when we now when I now hand over to uh, my colleague um, Anna Huttunen from the city of Lahti who will give us um, an idea how the city of Lahti is working of integrating um, mobility into their urban planning so Anna I'll give you the screen thank you Okay, can you see me now? Can you see my screen? 
Not yet. Okay. Maybe now? Now, now yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, okay, good, good morning, everyone. So my name is Anna and I work as the Sustainable Mobility Project Manager for City of Lahti. Um, and I was asked to tell you about how we are doing, how we are doing the integration between SUMP and the master planning. We are actually doing it now for the first time. So we are basically also testing how it all should go and how we can then improve um, on the next round. Um, first, I have to say that we were also part of the Sums Up um, last, was it last spring, right? And it was very it was very valuable it was very good for us because we went through all the exercises and now we really learned how we should do it on a on the best possible way so yeah i can really recommend that the program for everyone if it's still possible to take part but yeah let's let's start what we are doing in lahti um first few words um if i could do a poll i would probably ask how many of you know uh, where Lahti is or if you have been there but just to give you a few words about the city itself um, so we are located in southern Finland and it's um, 100 kilometers from the um, capital and it's like 50 minutes per train from Helsinki and also like 50 minutes to the airport so actually we are located pretty well um, our population is 120,000 and um, over 80% live in urbanized areas, which also gives um, some kind of um, framework for where we work and how we work, work with the city. And then um, over 70% lives within five kilometers of the urban core, which is of course very good thing. Like it's a, it gives a great potential for improving cycling and, and walking and all that. And of course, we are very green and yeah, we have like <laughs> everyone has a green area within 300 meters from from home. But yeah, maybe like compared to some bigger cities, we are rarely a small city. We are a very compact city. We have one um, clear center, not like five or other um, centers. But yeah, it's it's very compact city. Um, and yeah, the integrated cyclical master plan. So City of Lahti has been doing since 2009. They have developed a new process for the uh, master planning. And it started, started with that basically. And the idea is that the, the master plan is um, renewed every four years. So it's developed and um, further developed during every council round. So every four years and then um, the process will start over again. And this allows that if something cannot be implemented on one round, it can be brought to the next round. So we don't have to wait like 10 years, but we can do it like every four years to change something, to improve something, go through all the plans. So this kind of makes us um, quicker in, in, in the development sense. And that seems to be good. And now on this round, for the first time, um, we have integrated the SUMP in the same process. And to give like something background, where is the what is the mobility situation in the city? So basically, um, Lost is very car dependent, even though, like I said, there is a very low potential for becoming very sustainable city in, in mobility sense. Um, cycling is 9% during whole year, of course, during summer it increases a lot and during winter it decreases a lot. So there is uh, one of the things that we are concentrating is winter maintenance, of course. Walking is fairly good um, and then public transport, it's, as you can see, it's an issue that we need to tackle 5%. It's, uh, it's very low. And our goal um, for the whole Lahti direction process is to have the modal share in 2030, um, more than 50% 50 50 um, should be done by um, sustainable modes. And this, um, this goal is also written in the city strategy, 
and that comes down from there. So this really this really requires that we are uh, seamlessly working together with the SUMP and the urban urban structure and the urban plan. Um, what we have done in the city, we have kind of um, we have identified different mobility areas like that that also shows the possibilities and what we can do in in different areas and what we cannot do in different areas so it's not working sorry okay now um so you can see that we have identified so the city center, of course, it's it's a it has the biggest potential for um, increasing the amount of um, trips made by sustainable modes. Um, and then we also acknowledge that we have areas where you need the car because we cannot, due to financial and also uh, network um, kind of issues, we cannot really offer public transport in areas that are very peri-urban or rural. So that's maybe something that we in the future need to consider what would be the other services then to tackle tackle the private car issue there. And here what we also did, we have kind of identified, we have different areas and then different, different um, kind of how to use them, how what you can expect from the areas. So this is basically just like a um, more detailed picture of the of the earlier one. And this is a very, this seems to be a very good approach when, for instance, when they are doing the master plan and they are taking into look like in the different areas, you can always see, okay, where is the possibilities here? What are the possibilities there? And how, how shall we, how shall we proceed? And so here is the here is how we see um, the can, connection between the master plan and then the sustainable urban mobility plan. So basically, the master plan is the image of the strategy, of course, and it shows where the functions are, like services, livelihoods, uh, green areas, etc., um, nature parks and these kind of things and of course it always becomes legally binding with the decision by the city council and the next is actually like the coming coming year and then the sustainable urban mobility plan um, we have identified that it illustrates the dynamics of the city so we have identified the vision and goals for sustainable mobility it takes into account all modes of transport and it's of course also based on the city strategy and we try to take everyone on board because of course we need to well we actually we do a lot of participation already of course when we are developing the master plan but now at simultaneously we also do um then participation for the sump and the sump should um enhance enable uh, wise everyday choices for everyone and here you can see the Lahti direction process, um, which is um, basically it's it's the same same four year uh, clock for for all the all the things that we do. So we started this round 2017 when we set the strategic values and process targets, and uh, we also decided on the vision for um, sustainable urban mobility, which would be now on the first slide to to take like the basic elements into account and then the next round we can probably make even more ambitious uh, visions and we did this scenario work where we were kind of comparing different kind of scenarios and working them together with with um, the decision makers the city staff and and also asking from the citizens how they how they feel about them and then last year it was we did um massive work um to to engage the citizens we organized four big uh, workshops um, where the people could come and then give feedback on the plans and we also had this kind of big map questionnaire 
where they could um, locate their favorite routes and like what they dislike in the city during their daily commute, what they like there, what are like um, what are places that they feel they feel discomfort in the city, um, where it's noisy, where it's like too hazy and and all these kind of things. And this was also this was this was done by the Mapsionary questionnaire, but also like um, on site. So when the people came to the workshops, they could also give similar kind of feedback. And this has been, for instance, all the data that has been um, analyzed by the university. So we have also been working together with the university all the time. So they are kind of helping us <laughs> to, uh, to analyze, analyze the data that we get. And then, like between there, 2018 and 2019, we were able to um, do the draft list of SUMP measures. And then, um, in in spring 2019, um, we brought it to the to the board, and they and it was given to public consultation, like as well the master plan draft was. And then we all gathered all kind of feedback from from the citizens and and from the from from different kind of organizations, of course, and all that. And now um, since then we have been going through the through, through the feedback, and we also did the impact assessment for well for mobility, um, for ecosystem services, for uh, for health or like well-being in the city and different kind of aspects. And um, we also got the results from the impact assessment work. And now currently based on that and all the other feedback we have been given, we are now um, developing the detailed action plan for SUMP, um, making clear the responsibilities there are and also considering the financing. And then we 2020 is the approval phase, and we should bring the maybe it's not the draft anymore, but it's the proposal. Uh, we should bring to the uh, the board, the city council, um, in March and April 2020, and then we will see how we how we manage how we end up with that. Um, and yeah, it's it's the it's the first time we are doing it now, and of course there are things that you already noticed that you you maybe could have done in a different way, but on the other hand, it also allows a lot of like it it's also very it's very yeah, I don't know. Um, it's somehow also very fascinating to be creating a new kind of process because it's also like this kind of sustainable mobility. As you can imagine, you should get different kind of people to work together on that. So it's also, even though you probably think that, okay, maybe we don't have any silos anymore, but then you notice that, okay, maybe there are still some silos still because you don't always know, okay, who should I ask now to get this done and who should I ask now to get this done. So I think one very important thing about the SUMP is also to bring the right people to sit next to each other and like enhance the comp cooperation and create new processes for, for co cooperation when it comes to mobility. Now it's stuck again. Okay. Um, and here you can see the draft measures we have now. So um, we have we have identified um, 90 measures, and they are also because we are we are doing this kind of um, lofty story that comes along with the with the process where we are explaining everything, and there are different kind of headlines, and where we are kind of drafting how the city is looking now and how it should be in 2030. So we are basically explaining the goals that we have for the city. Um, and we have now identified our SUMP measures also underneath um, the same same titles. So we have the sustainably growing Lahti, where we have added mobility management and improving walking and cycling. So we are doing this cycling network 2030. Um, I will show a picture of that later. 
And then there are also other measures for like guidance and improving winter maintenance, which is very important both for walking and cycling. And then um, we are already starting next year with the first aid kit for cycling routes, like curbs and pavements, things that you can already do before you can actually uh, build totally new infrastructure. Then we are doing. Um, then our plan is to start making mobility mobility plans for schools. Um, we are going to have a model from that we get from Pavola campus, which is a big campus that is coming to the city center. Then, of course, the city personnel is, is on board. The communication campaigns and events, we, we want to like improve that. We want to make, well, the idea is to make every year bigger and bigger walking and cycling events. And then uh, one new idea is, is to build this kind of cycle point where you could have like cy cycling repair services, maybe some courses. And the idea is to do it with um, uh, youth services together. So they would be those who kind of run the business or not the business, but the service and then work there and, and uh, develop it further. So also this kind of work between different service sectors we have in the city. Um, then we have the city of services where we have different things related to public transport. We are currently doing the trunk network um, renewal, renovation. And then, of course, we are trying to bring real-time data and then also the alternative fuels issue, electrification, things like that. And one big thing for the city is the city bike system that we are going to pilot next year and then hopefully impl implement uh, in a big scale in 2021. And then, of course, park and ride. And then um, what we already started is this Liverpool city centre work. So we are updating the plan for the city centre with with the with the big idea of of improving the walkability of the city centre and redirecting the traffic flows that are um, now we have one very like well one of the main roads is just surpassing the city centre which is of course not not the best uh, best conditions so there is noise and there is traffic and it's yeah it's yeah, bad air quality during certain times of the year. So that's something that we are we are kind of trying to develop a circulation plan because we actually have this kind of ring roads that go along around the city center. And then of course we have the traffic safety there. And some of these that are with the star, they are also they have been added as strategic lighthouse projects, uh, which of course gives them already better um, acceptance when we bring them further on. And here is the cycling map. So we have like the red ones are the uh, main routes and the blue ones are then the district routes. And of course, this is also a very important thing that has been um, developed together with the master planning team and also um, the zone zoning team is they this also this needs to be taken into into the legally binding plan next spring um, and one well one example of of um, this uh, cycling network development is that what we are developing the city cap project so we are building this kind of well holistically safe and comfortable um, cycling highway from the travel center to the south of the city. So this should this should serve as an example that then we can copy in the next next constructions that we have when it comes to cycling. And um, this should be built next year, basically. And one more. Oh yeah, this is something that I, I wanted to brought up, of course, um, that we are the European Green Capital 2021 and of course this is also a very good thing for the city because this kind of i think this this also gives pressure but it also kind of brings very positive vibes for the development of the city like that everyone has to do their share or highlighting also what we have already done but what we also can still improve uh, in 2021 and after that 
in the in the coming years but yeah thank you that was my presentation yes thank you anna thanks very much and still congratulations for winning the green capital that's only a couple of months ago <laughs> yeah. um, really uh, really interesting and very um yeah i think really forward thinking um activities that you're doing in in Lahti. and i just want to say uh, one more time so if you have any questions to anna please add them to the question um function i have already some on my paper but let's see if somebody will ask uh, the same um thanks um so we will now proceed to the next presentation right away or like I will give you a short poll in between, but we will then um, proceed and then we take all other comments and and um, and questions afterwards. So I will shortly um, show my screen again and ask you one more question. And this is, of course, well, it's very similar to the one that we had now. So when we now talk about um, harmonizing SUMPs with the climate plans or SECOPs, we'd like to ask you, um, is your SUMP harmonized with your climate strategy, your climate plan, or your SECAP if you have one? And now I tried to update it. I got a little comment, of course, like if you don't have either an SUMP or a SECAP, then it's hard to answer. But um, just just for us and for the presenters to get some kind of an idea. Okay, a few more seconds that we have at least half of the attendees voting okay i'll close the poll and share share the results so 40 percent of those that have voted was like 60 percent of the attendees now we have a climate strategy or a SICA, but no sump or then 20% that they have an SUMP but no climate strategy. That's also an interesting, interesting number. But otherwise, it's quite, quite um, even. Okay. But um, having this in mind, we will now uh, continue with uh, hearing about how you can harmonize your SICAP and your SUMP. And I'm really happy to have uh, that we have Fabio Tomasi with us today. I'll um, hand over the screen and the presentation to him. And he will tell us about the Simpla project and their outcomes and how to work with this topic. Good morning, everybody. Thanks uh, for inviting to this webinar. Uh, I hope you can see my slides. Yes. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, and also thank you for answering the poll. It's a very interesting. Uh, to see how cities are dealing with the topic that was um, uh, of the project Simpla. I have been coordinated um, since the objective of the project was indeed the harmonization of uh, SMP, in other words, mobility planning with energy and uh, climate uh, planning adaptation, namely SEAP and uh, SECAP. So oh, just a few words, very few words about the project. The project was funded by the Horizon 2020 program. And um, we had the partnership, uh, including uh, partners, both technical and institutional, from uh, different countries, Italy, Austria, Spain, Bulgaria, Croatia, and Romania. We had later also some replicating organization from uh, other countries. So we had the, the opportunity of uh, share ideas and approaches from different countries. So um, what we have worked on was uh, providing a methodology that has later become also um, a topic guide uh, annexed to the new SMP guidelines um, to as we say, coordinate the, the planning, both in terms of mobility and energy and climate. Uh, 
um, we what we are not we are not suggesting to develop a third plan but uh, to have two plans that harmonize and to do so we develop this methodology that um, is going to ease uh, the work uh, of uh, harmonization since usually what we have found to be the most common situation is that energy and climate is managed by one department of the city and mobility is planned by another department. And these two departments uh, uh, very often uh, depends from two different uh, city councillors, which sometimes do not cooperate even then. And, uh, um, they are not used to cooperate. That means that very often the two plans are, uh, are developed and implemented in a totally different way. They do not share a common vision and objective. They do not share data. Um, they duplicate work and sometimes lead to incoherent activities and analysis. Uh, what we are suggesting is a methodology to provide synergies in order to have more coherent plans that led to the achievement of um, the city vision and goal on one end and on the other end also uh, improve uh, the efficiency of the work done uh, by the teams uh, involved in uh, energy and mobility planning. The feeling that uh, someone could have uh, looking uh, very quickly in methodology is that it is a further burden, something more that you are requested to do, or something that usually is not requested by the legislative frameworks in to my knowledge, uh, there's no requirements in any country to have these two plans coordinated. But at the end of the fair, uh, you will find that uh, you will achieve a, a better quality of plan and that you will avoid some uh, duplication of work. Um, and so at the end, there's also an increase in terms of efficiency. Uh, before we move on, I would just like to draw your attention to some uh, um, similarities and, and special differences between the SECAPs and the SMP. First of all, there's a, a difference of objectives since SECAM main aim is reducing Q2 emission uh, and also to adopt some strategies to climate change adaptation which is the main news from SECAP in comparison to the previous SEAP. Uh, SECAP are sustainable energy and climate action plan. Uh, that means that they work to uh, foster in uh, municipalities uh, uh, energy efficiency, um, use of renewable energy, and to mitigate the impact on the climate change, but also to work uh, on uh, the adaptation on the climate change that is already going on. The objectives of SMP is uh, uh, defined uh, in to include uh, improving uh, the quality of life, which is a quite uh, uh, broad an objective since it includes uh, reducing uh, the emission uh, of generated by traffic and mobility, but also improving accessibility, for example. So it's a wider scope that in part uh, is overlapping with the objective of a SECAP, but in part it doesn't. Then uh, the SECAP uh, is applied from any kind of uh, local authorities from a small village to large city, whereas usually SMP are developed from uh, larger cities or at least medium city. Um, also, the way 
of monitoring is totally different. In the case of SECAP, everything is very centralized. There's uh, the component of mayor office that provides the, not just the methodology, but also templates and uh, collects the data. The process of, of monitoring uh, is very clear defined. Uh, the city should define a baseline um, of energy consumption and CO2 emission. And uh, the approach is a single scenario. So the starting date with the compare with uh, uh, 2030. In the case of uh, SMP, the process is decentralized. The guidelines for uh, SMP developments provide uh, uh, an indication, does not so strictly as in the case of the common of mayor. Uh, also, the deadline for the monitoring are not set, uh, and the process of monitoring is uh, totally um, decentralized with the city doing the monitoring by itself. And also there's uh, um, no control by any European organization. Um, this is also shown by the fact that you can easily find very updated um, data on the numbers of cities and municipal villages that sign the covenant of mayor office with uh, the um, various the number of cities that has developed SMP is uh, well less defined. There are uh, surveys uh, that are checked, but since there's no centralized office, you cannot find any real time data as you can find by the Covenant of Mayor Office. These differences uh, make a challenge and generate problem when a city has a uh, to work on harmonizing the two plans. And uh, indeed, as we said, the role of the harmonization process is that, uh, as shown in the figure, of central gears that makes the two other wheels rotate in the same directions and more efficiently. The key principles of uh, our approach uh, is uh, a circular methodology, a project management uh, um, approach, um, which is very useful because usually I see that many cities, at least uh, in my country, the feeling is that in many countries not uh, very used uh, with uh, the use of project management principle, with uh, having strong deadline and the monitoring system. The need of a strong leadership to guide the process, the uh, multidisciplinary cooperation is uh, by definition a key requirement for having uh, um, a combined development, as well as a political commitment, a comprehensive strategic wisdom. Also, the involvement of stakeholders is important. Stakeholders and, uh, are crucial both for the development of uh, SECAP and the SMP. So it is important that also in the harmonization process they are involved. And uh, again, a special role should be given to data um, because uh, I think that it's very important for both plans to have a, a baseline and a coherent process of monitoring to check uh, the assess, uh, to assess the development of the plans and the results achieved and check if the plans are moving in the right direction and as well as if they have been developed in a harmonized and coordinated way. As you see, the process is uh, circular since we have uh, an initiation phase, then uh, the planning, uh, the implementation, monitoring and controlling of the harmonization process, and again update and continuations that start again the cycle, which is quite common also to the SMP approach. So phase one in 
uh, there's the important is that there is a political commitment uh, um, to have uh, the two departments of energy and climate and uh, mobility working together and uh, the second half uh, also made by the political part of harmonization teams in other words of people coming from different departments working together which could be not just those uh, working uh, on uh, energy and mobility, but could be very useful also to have uh, some other work in a different department related with um, statistics and data collections. Um, so it must be checked that all uh, the required expertise is involved. And, uh, at this stage, it's also so important to have a decision of a project leader, the leadership, as we say. And this is a very delicate issue, um, since uh, what we are suggesting is that the leader of the harmonization team should not be the leader either of the SMP or the SECAP, but should be a third and possibly independent person, in order to avoid that one part uh, as a perception that the other is dominating uh, the process, whereas it should be done uh, in, uh, in, a, uh, in a way that both parties have uh, equal dignity and power. Phase two planning, it should be done initial assessment of the plans, of the data available, um, an involvement of which partners and stakeholders should be involved in the process, and a definition of work plan, as I said, with the allocation of tasks, definition of milestones, and um, the development of a GAN. Then, uh, moving to the implementation of the harmonization process, the first point is the harmonization of vision, sharing uh, data set uh, and uh, collection of data, uh, harmonization of reference areas and monitoring timeframes, uh, and then you can move it to the harmonization of action, and finally, the formal program plans. Going in the details, uh, the first important task is the definition of a harmonized vision, which uh, also uh, the presentation before underlined the importance of having a common strategic vision for the whole city. I mean, uh, you cannot work just uh, on the reduction of CO2 emissions or the reduction of the traffic. Uh, if uh, these two operational tasks are not aimed at achieving a wider objectives, a vision of the city, which kind of cities do you want by 2030? Uh, this is very important and this should be set at the political level um because uh, it's uh, not just the team working on the SEAP on the SMP that should be involved in achieving the results but it's the full municipality that should work on achieving these overall results which also makes the actions implemented by the plans uh, more understandable for the public and more easily communicate to the citizens, consumers, and all the stakeholders if they fit to the to the vision of the city and not just to the uh, specific objectives of the two plans. So um, after this uh, uh, common vision has been set, you must be sure that uh, this uh, is clearly described in the same way, both in the chapter of SECAP and the SMP. 
Then the second key point is data. Data are extremely relevant for uh, both plan. And when we start working with cities that uh, uh, were dealing with the issues uh, of the harmonization of the two plans, uh, uh, that was the major problems because we very often find that uh, the, the data were collecting uh, and uh, estimated with totally different uh, technologies. The work was done twice uh, and the results was uh, a waste of time and efforts and sometimes results to data that was not just comparable but also describing situations that were totally different. And sometimes also we find that, that uh, one of the two teams, since was not an expert in the other things, also make some remarkable mistake. Um, so it could be what I'm going to say very silly, but I would say that in many cases uh, it uh, was a big problem. So it is important to have a common data repository which could be assessed by both uh, departments. The definition of common standards uh, for uh, data collections and analysis, and uh, also uh, common methodologies for making estimates when uh, no uh, direct data are available. That means uh, this process would require some more time the first time, but then in the long term, after uh, a common methodology process for data collections uh, has been set, uh, that would avoid not that would lead not just to more uh, uh, reliable data, but also to more efficiency in the process. So all the time you will invest at the beginning for setting up the system, it will be saved in the future when collecting the data. The problem, as I said before, is that SECAP and SMP has uh, different objectives and uh, different uh, also approaches for data collections and monitoring. What we are suggesting is that since SECAP every two years is uh, required to send uh, um, the data of the monitoring to the covenant of mayor, that uh, the SMP at the same time makes uh, an interim monitoring of, uh, of its plan implementation and what is more important to have also a common final date to define the achievement of the objectives. Um, these uh, has different benefits on one end um, because uh, you can collect uh, data together so you can save effort you can see how the two plans uh, are developing in parallel if they are working well or not uh, at the same times which will also make uh, uh, the possibility of a common revision of the plans, since it's important to always update the plans and improve them during implementation. On the other end, this uh, uh, sometimes requires uh, SMP to make a more frequent monitoring, since usually they do it not so much frequently. But again, I think that uh, collecting data is um, extremely important and improve the efficiency. Sometimes data are provided by national statistics, uh, which are not uh, updated every two years. But uh, again, it could be that for a couple of indicators, you cannot have a, such a frequent monitoring. but I think it is important that in your plan you have uh, some indicators that is measured in the short with a short period. 
then after you have finalized uh, this first set of activities there's a common vision you have a collected data you can work uh, on the activities um, the SECAP has a chapter developed to mobility and this chapter should be strongly coordinated with the SMP. It's not exactly the same because the objectives are quite different, but the actions should be the same. Moreover, you could also investigate if uh, other actions uh, are coherent. If, for example, um, giving um, benefits for uh, the introduction of electric vehicles is uh, one of your action, you must be sure that also on the energy side there are coherent actions. On one side, to be sure, for example, that the electric grid is able to manage the demand of energy generated by a wider diffusion of electric vehicles. On the other hand, to be sure that a high proportion of the energy that is going to power these electric vehicles is generated by renewable energy. There are, for example, many studies and research that demonstrate that uh, the environmental impact of electric vehicles depends a lot on which kind, uh, in which way the use is produced. Is if, for example, it is producing mainly from coal, the environmental impact of an electric vehicle could be equal or even worse of an internal combustion vehicle. Whereas, of course, the maximum benefit is when the 100% of the energy used is produced from renewable. So, this is just an example of how you could coordinate actions. Then, uh, you should go through a detailed revision of the few plans and um, and then uh, make the changes and also make a report to the policy maker and to the um, stakeholder as well as uh, a review should be planned you should produce as i said an harmonization record it was the key points uh, to be shared. You can find uh, uh, many, there are many resources available. Um, there are the guidelines available in different language, both available in PDF or, or uh, online, online observatory. We have uh, a collection of harmonized plans. Uh, there are webinars video and uh, interviews uh, and powerpoint from the training session and uh, minutes from the mutual learning workshop that can help you before ending just a few words about uh, so uh, the how climate change adaptation could be integrated to mobility considering which are the main uh, challenges posed by climate change to mobility uh, which of course in the urban level which are extreme rainfall events floods and heat wave especially in southern europe but it's getting common also in northern europe in case of rainfall events uh, you can reconsider river banks uh, and uh, underpasses to avoid the situation that you can see in the picture Flood alert uh, system possible uh, automated and info mobility apps so that if there are uh, such kind of emergency, people can plan their mobility accordingly. A use of permeable payments in parking uh, and uh, other assets to reduce floods. 
in case of heat wave, uh, it is important to think about chaining of pedestrian and bike roads with water springs and other things that make uh, um, cycling in summer more comfortable. In southern Europe, uh, it's um, one of the main reasons for people not biking is indeed uh, more heat than cold. And uh, also you um, can think about trees of photovoltaic platform in large parking areas to have a shading and avoid overheating uh, generated by the cars uh, that can lead to local uh, overheating as well as increase the energy consumption by the air conditioning of the cars. So these are my contacts in case you have uh, more uh, questions or after the webinar you can contact me at any time. So, Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you very much for this really interesting presentation. And I recommend you all to go and visit the Simpler uh, website because there's really a lot of information and all the guidelines available. And I think it's really uh, an, an interesting set of, of documentations that you have produced during the project. So that's, that's really worth. Please go and have a look on the website. Um, yeah, so now we would uh, turn to the question and answer uh, section. Um, and um, if there are still any questions coming from the, um, from the audience, please insert them into the question box. I will uh, otherwise now start with some questions from our side and actually would just uh, continue perhaps uh, to ask something directly to Fabio. So um, you said that there will be some harmonized plans are coming up that you will publish. Uh, and as you, as I saw from your consortium, so we're mainly working with different kind of organizations and regional reason organizations. How did you involve uh, municipalities and whether mainly, mainly municipalities from those countries that you collaborated or how how did you kind of test the method yeah so uh, during the project implementation we involved the municipality throughout the process uh, in the definition of the guidelines uh, we had uh, several focus group in different countries so we collected their feedback then we had the training with the municipalities from the countries involved and then also provided coaching with implementation of the plans and later also we had some we had a specific training and water learning workshop with the um, replicating organizations that now are providing support to cities in other countries Okay. Can you tell what countries this uh, method will be replicated approximately? Well, we had a replication from uh, Czech Republic, from uh, Slovenia, from um, also from uh, Ukraine and uh, Albania. So we have different European and non-European uh, countries. Okay. And. Uh, in any case, now uh, you can find the guidelines also on LTS. So this is get, it's easy to find the guidelines. Yeah, yeah. And as you mentioned in the beginning, just want to stress this one more time. Also, your approach was is now part of the new SUMP guidelines. So kind of wherever you see it, yeah, it's part. Uh, it's been integrated. Great, thanks. Um, and now I have one question to Anna. Anna, are you still? Still there? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, just uh, two questions that came up when I listened to your presentation. So first of all, you mentioned, I mean, first of all, I think it was really um, interesting how you talked about how you start new processes in Lahti, because I think this is very often in all of our mobility projects or in general, when we talk with municipalities and how to develop new ways of working and of cooperation, it's a really big um, challenge for many municipalities to do things differently than they have done many years before. Um, so I think this is a, this is really interesting how you have um, decided 
to create those new processes. But you also mentioned that now you know already what you would do differently next time when it comes to uh, to this um, uh, coordination of SUMPs and urban planning. And can you share, you don't have to go deep into the details, but share a little bit what that would be and what you would recommend other cities who want to um, integrate uh, mobility planning and urban planning? Um, yeah, I think first of all, uh, since we we only like this fall, we set up uh, like um, like a certain smaller group, like this kind of SUMP working group that meets like every month. So I think I now it, of course it will continue. But if I, for instance, if we would have been possible, I think it would have been good to uh, create this kind of group right away in 2017 when the process started, like right from the beginning, and then all these people, they would work together. And so everyone would have been on the same page from the very beginning of the process. Mm -hmm. um, and then another thing, of course, that that's of course also because of, we are only doing it for the first time now is like the indicators and, and the monitoring of the process. Because now, um, we did the impact assessment like has been done before on on the rounds for the master plan um next year or next time we are going to be there uh, in four years it means that we also already have the indicators that we have um explicitly set for the sump both for the mm -hmm. sump measures as well as like on mobility development as such like when it comes to um, master planning and i think that's also something that uh could have been done in advance but of course you really those are those things that you might do in a different way but I don't in the end I don't know if you could really do that in a different way when you are doing it for the first time mm. but yeah definitely like more concentration on the indicators and all of that so maybe maybe start that work also earlier. Mm. But yeah, I, as, I, as you mentioned, I mean, I think it's really, it's also, of course, a learning process for an organization. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I mean, just already now reflecting on the things that you would do differently next time, I think it's, uh, I mean, that's <laughs> the best thing that you can do and then you can, can improve. And uh, what I would be still also interested, like you said that you have the SUMP working group, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like what kind of people do you have in there? And then was it difficult to motivate people to form this kind of interdepartmental group? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy that there are now um, most of the people that have been invited. Um, we have like from, from the urban environment, we have from different um, units, we have people. So we have like, we have planners and then we have um, uh, like from the street planning and then from the traffic planning and then from the public transport. Um, then we also have invited from the from the education sector, which is of course very important because we're going to work with them. And then we have from the environmental environment sector or the environment group as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I think everyone who is now involved, they, they also acknowledge the importance of it. And of course, partially you really know this, that there is like a lot of things are happening, but you just have to discuss them so that you know that, oh, actually this is, this is already going forward. We just mm. didn't know that yet, you know. So mm. I think really the communication is the cue also, also here, and I think yeah. it's it's a good thing. And I think because people show up <laughs> every time, so it's it's already a, a good thing. So that they yeah. also maybe notice that it it's worthwhile coming at least to discuss. Mm. Yeah, that's a good sign. Of course, if people are motivated, I mean, that's in the end the key to to all this kind of cooperation work that you have to find people who are motivated to do that for the mm -hmm, the bigger mm -hmm. good, so to say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, there seem to be no questions coming up now from the from the audience. So it seems that your presentations really were well. Uh, explaining um, well explained and and very and very clear. That's great. Um, to all the atten attendees still, uh, we will make the presentations and also the recording of this webinar available afterwards. Uh, like Maya showed before, you will find that all on the Sums Up website, and you will also get um, an email still about this when when all the material is ready. So you can revisit the website uh, or the the presentations and and the recording as well. 
Um, then I would now first want to say thank you very much, Anna and, and uh, Fabio, for now. And I have a few last slides here. Let's see. And these practically um, involve, oh, now this starts again, sorry. Yeah, so just as a small reminder, as my colleague Maya already mentioned before, um, please go and register. If you like the webinar, please go and register for our next one. And this will be our final webinar uh, within the SUM sub project on financing and funding options for sustainable urban mobility plans. And I think this is a very crucial topic for many cities to find out like what perhaps also new ways there are to get funding to make to do your SUMPs. We are right now planning this and hope we also have very interesting speakers in that webinar. It takes place in, on December 7th, uh, 10th, sorry, December 10th on a Tuesday, the same time uh, as today from 10 to 11.30 Central European time. And you can register, you find the link on the SAMSUB website. And as well as the, um, you also find on the SAMSUB website or directly on the Mobility Academy, the the, um, the e-courses that Maya mentioned already. So there you find uh, more information from the project and uh, yeah, practically many things you need to know around developing your SUMP. Well, then I would say thank you all for listening and for attending and thank you one more time to our speakers um, and I wish you all a great day. Thank you and goodbye. Thanks.